Hello there, my name's Scott. Today I'm going to be doing a review on the h Atty, which I purchased via the manufacturer's website at www.garageofcreation.com. Okay, so no need for any disclaimers. Let's go straight ahead and show you in a bit more detail. Okay, so the h Atty comes in a nice little crushed velvet pouch. And inside the pouch, you're going to find the atomizer, as well as a bag containing some spare O-rings and an insulator. Okay, so here I have the h Atty, which is made out of 316 grade stainless steel. Now, overall build quality is good, but there's one thing that really does let it down for me personally, and that is the fact it's come with two different finishes. Now, if you look at the finish here, you've got a nice, uh, smooth, sort of brushed finish, no problems whatsoever. But from this point upwards, it's a slightly different finish. It's um, a little bit more polished. It's a slightly different colour. And also, if you look carefully, you can see you've got these little tiny grooves all the way up there. I'm not talking about these uh, big grooves, but I'm talking about little tiny grooves. And if I run my fingernail up and down, you can actually feel them. Whereas on this section here, if I do the same thing, it's completely smooth. Now, it's uh, quite an expensive atomizer, and for the price, I would expect it to come you know, completely and utterly perfect. So for me, having two different finishes is a, a little bit of a letdown, to be quite honest. And once this review has been uh, finished recording, I'm probably going to attack this section with a bit of sandpaper just to sort of uh, match them up. It doesn't stick out sort of too much, but uh, for me personally, where I'm quite sort of fussy, you know, it does, uh, like I said, stick out a bit like a sore thumb. Okay, so moving on then, on the bottom you're going to find a 510 atomizer connection. So that means you can use it with your 510 devices. And although it does appear to have an adjustable centre pin, it isn't really adjustable. Although you can actually extend the overall length of the threaded area here by changing over to a thinner O-ring. And I'll show you that in the next section. This is the uh, hidden O-ring system, which is obviously uh, quite well known with the Hellfire atomizers. And it has a Pyrex tank which holds around 3 millilitres of e-liquid. On the top cap you're going to find two stacked sort of air holes and these are 0.8 millimetre in diameter each. And although a 0.8 millimetre diameter is going to give you a pretty tight drawer, where you have two of them it does tend to make the drawer a little bit looser than using uh, just one on its own. And then on top you're going to find space for your favourite 510 drip tip. And just about every drip tip that I've tried fits in there really nice and snugly. Okay, so with the top cap removed, you can see you have this reduced chamber. This is going to make the uh, vapour a little bit warmer and also give you that little bit of extra flavour. And although it's only held in position by this very thin o-ring, it does a really good job of holding it nice and securely. You get a nice little firm positive click there. The atomizer deck has two different size wick holes. You have a slightly smaller one, which is 2.5 millimetres, and a slightly larger one, which is 3 millimetres and each one has its own uh, negative connection. Now, although you have got two wick holes and two negative connections, you can't really set up with a dual wick or as a, with a U wick, because obviously you need to have one hole spare in order to actually fill the tank up with e-liquid. And for connecting your positive wire, you've just got a nice simple connection here, a little nut that you screw up and down, and you're going to trap the wire in between the two washers. Okay, so here are all the parts that make up the h Atty, and what I'll do now is quickly go ahead and show you how it all fits together, and then I'll show you how I've been getting my one all set up. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is take the central shaft and screw that into the base section. Now, if you happen to have a device which doesn't have its own adjustable centre pin, and you're finding that you're not getting a good connection because this isn't sticking out far enough, what you can do is exchange that o-ring there for one of the thinner o-rings in the spares bag and that will then give you about another sort of millimetre or two which should hopefully then, uh, solve that issue. So uh, just make sure you've got whatever o-ring you're going to be using attached to that part there and then screw it into the base. And also make sure this is done up nice and tight. And then once the central shaft has been screwed in tightly, you can take one of the thick O-rings, place it over the top, push it down to the bottom, and then take the uh, Pyrex tank, and as you can see, it's a really nice, thick, chunky tank, and again, just slide it over the top. For the next step, I'm just going to take the atomizer deck, flip it over, and then insert this O-ring as well. Before I do that, though, you know, as you can see here, again, the quality is let down a little bit by the actual finish. It looks a little bit on the rough side. You've got lots of sort of swells and almost like uh, little sort of scuff marks, 
which uh, I appreciate that this part of the atomizer isn't actually seen once it's all assembled, but for the price, you know, you would expect every part to come absolutely perfect. Okay, so uh, cracking on anyway, I'm going to take the O-ring and just place that into the top there. And then once the O-rings and the tank are in position, you can just screw the two pieces together. And again, just make sure it's done up nice and tight. And then finish that off by taking the little insulator, sliding it over the top and pushing it all the way down. And then to finish assembly, I'm just going to take the first nut and screw that all the way down to the bottom. And then you can take the first washer and just slide it over the top. Followed by the second washer. And then finally the last nut. Okay, so for the next step I need to add a wick and coil. And I'm going to be setting this up quite differently compared to how I normally set up a, a Genesis atomizer in my reviews. So I'm still going to be using some 28 gauge wire and I'm still going to be using some 400 mesh. The mesh here was cut out at a length of 32 millimeters by a width of 10 millimeters. And I've then rolled it up to make a really nice thin wick. And the reasons for that will become clear as we uh, progress. Okay, so this method I'm going to show you is uh, very similar to these sort of micro coils mixed in with a bit of the sort of Peter K method of uh, setting up a Genesis atomizer. And like I said, this works really, really well with the uh, HAT. It works also you know, really well with other atomizers as well, but uh, for whatever reason, it just seems to work exceptionally well with the HAT. So what I've done here is I've cut off a length of the 28 gauge wire. And I'm going to be using a syringe. Now you can use a, a drill bit if you want to perform a bit of a larger sort of um, coils, but for me personally, I really am liking the tiny, tiny little coils uh, with the uh, very thin sort of mesh wick. Like I said, it just works really well. So what I'm gonna do is uh, take the wire and wrap it as tight as I possibly can around this syringe. I'm gonna be adding around between sort of 10 and 12 coils, making sure that they're as close as they possibly can be, preferably touching if possible. And I'm just going to hold it in position now, grab the uh, pliers and just again, just put it sort of slightly tight, just to strengthen it up a little bit. And then on the other side as well. And then that is the, uh, the coil all set up and ready to be installed. Okay, so all I've done is uh, drop the syringe through the smaller of the two wick holes. So I'm using the 2.5 millimeter wick hole. I'm just going to take the, uh, the very bottom wire, wrap it underneath the negative terminal, and then take a screwdriver and tighten it up. And then take the top wire and just place it in between the two washers, like so. And again, just tighten that up as well. And then once it's all straightened up, it should look a little bit like that. And then from there you can just uh, remove the excess pieces of wire. If you want to use a pair of cutters you can, but I personally like to just apply a bit of tension, give it a spin and it should snap off nice and clean. Right, so the next thing you want to do is actually remove the syringe and then once that's removed you should have the coils sort of left perfectly in position. Obviously when you do this, just use a little bit of uh, care because you don't obviously uh, make the coils up. Okay, so before I add the wick, which I'm gonna do by basically feeding it through the uh, center of the coils there, 
I'm just going to actually pulse it a few times to get it nice and hot then cold, nice and hot then cold. And I find that this uh, sort of does two things. One, it's going to actually strengthen up the coils so they don't get sort of uh, mucked up when you're pushing the actual wick through. And also it adds a layer of oxidisation to it which obviously helps to eliminate sort of short circuits and hot spots. Okay, so I'm just going to start firing up a little bit now. Now when it comes to uh, inserting the wick through the middle of the coils there, you want to make sure that the wick isn't too big so you're going to obviously damage the coils, but also not too small so it's not going to actually be making any sort of contact. You want to sort of experiment a little bit and just make sure that uh, when you add the wick, it is actually going to be in contact with the coils without sort of damaging them. It does take a little bit of practice, but uh, you just got to keep on rolling it between your fingers until it feels uh, eventually about right. So I'm just going to attempt to do this and uh, slide it through the centre of the coils there. And if you feel it gets a little bit sort of stuck, if you just sort of spin it as you push it down, then it should uh, go through nice and easy. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm sure most people have noticed that my wick isn't actually oxidised. And I'm going to do the sort of oxidisation process by doing the older pulse method. So this may take a few seconds, it may take a minute, so obviously I will edit to uh, make it less boring to watch. But what I'm going to do is just basically pulse the switch and just uh, keep on doing that until eventually all the coils light up evenly and at the same time. Gradually getting there. It's starting to look quite good. And uh, as far as I can tell in this light, that looks like it's all sorted out. Okay, so now the uh, coils are all lighting up evenly and at the same time, I'm just going to take my bottle of juice, insert the nozzle into the uh, other wick hole there and fill the tank up with e-liquid. Then just uh, give it a second or two for the capillary action to start working and uh, hopefully we should start seeing some uh, really nice vapour. Okay, so what I need to do now is add my top cap. And uh, like with any Genesis atomizer, I just want to make sure that the air hole or air holes in this case line up directly in front of the wick. And that'll give you the uh, most amount of vapor. And then take your drip tip and whack that in the top. Okay, so that is the H Atty. Let's go ahead, see what it vapes like. Okay, so that was the H Atty. And what I'll do now is go ahead and show in action. So I'm going to be using it on my Pisces T, which is like a mechanical mod. The battery came off the charger around five minutes ago, so it should be a fully charged battery and reading around sort of 4.2 volts. The uh, resistance of the coil, according to my multimeter, is 1.5 ohms, and the tank has been filled up with some 18 milligram strength tobacco flavored e-liquid. It's just a, a PG e-liquid. Okay, so this is the H Atty. So as you can see, like vapor wise, you know, you're getting plenty of vapor out of it. But like I always say, just bear in mind that the amount of vapor production you're going to get will be uh, quite dependent on how you've actually got it set up, what sort of e-liquid you're using, the type of uh, voltage or wattage you're pushing through the coil, etc., etc. But nevertheless, with the setup I've got here, getting plenty of uh, vapor, flavor, and throw here.
And um, I've been really enjoying using the, uh, like that micro coil. I suppose it's, I don't think it's exactly like a micro coil, but it's sort of based on the micro coils. And it uh, gives it a really nice sort of uh, vape. I find it to be really nice and easy to sort of set up as well. Now, if you're a beginner, you're know, sort of struggling a little bit with sort of hot spots and hot legs and things like that, it's worth sort of giving it a shot, especially if you actually um, oxidise the, uh, the wick before you push it down through the coils. It makes sort of set up really nice and simple, to be quite honest. So if you are struggling, it's worth sort of giving that one a shot. And um, I like it, it just seems to, um, it gives you a slightly different vape. The actual temperature of the vapour isn't quite as hot as what it would be with a, a regular sort of setup. And it seems to be just a little bit sort of smoother, is the only way I can sort of describe it. You're getting plenty of flavour out of it, a nice strong throat hit, and uh, plenty of vapour as well. So if you've never tried one before, you know, it's worth sort of having a little experiment and trying one out for yourself. Now, one thing that's really surprising is, um, even though that wick, it's only, sort of only cut it out sort of 10 millimetres wide, and it's, once you've rolled it up and you've fed it through the coils, it's extremely thin, and you wouldn't expect it to sort of wick all that well, but it wicks, you know, extremely well, and it's almost like you have to sort of try and keep the mod held downwards rather than tilt it, because otherwise it tends to sort of uh, wick too much, if, uh, if anything, you know, so wicking-wise, it does, uh, does the job nicely. Only sort of slight negative though is that, um, especially with this one, we have the two different sized uh, wick holes and the other spare wick hole is three millimetres. Obviously you can't sort of tilt it too much, otherwise the juice just sort of starts uh, pouring out unfortunately. But uh, other than that though, um, you know, it works a treat. Now uh, flavour, like I said, you know, you're getting plenty of flavour out of it, exactly what you'd expect from a sort of nicely sort of setup Genesis Atomizer and throw hit wise, you're getting a really nice uh, strong kick in the back of the throat. The actual warmth of the vapour now, well I've got it set up with this sort of micro coil style uh, setup. It's um, it's still a warm vape, but it's not quite as warm as if you sort of set it up in the more sort of uh, traditional method with just sort of wrapping sort of four or five coils around the uh, wick. When it's set up like that, it's definitely a lot hotter vape. So I can say if you're going to set it up normally, with around a sort of 1.2 ohm coil, it's uh, definitely quite a hot vape. If you set it up like what I showed you in the close-up shots, I'd say it's more like, um, uh, it's not a cold vape, but it's more like a, a warm vape. It's just just nice little temperature, really. The actual, um, the draw on it, you'd expect it to be quite a tight draw where you've got the uh, 0 0.8 millimeter air holes Obviously, you've got two of them, so it does tend to sort of make it a little bit looser. It's not the same as having, I suppose, like the equivalent would be like a 1.6 uh, millimeter air hole. It's not like a, a loose draw like that. It's still quite a tight draw. And I suppose, if anything, you know, if you've used a few Genesis atomizers before, I'd say it's probably similar to something that's around sort of 1.2 millimeters. So it's, um, it's not an overly tight draw, but uh, you've got a nice amount of resistance there, let's put it that way. When it comes to a uh, setup, uh, for me personally, I found it to be a really nice and simple uh, Genesis atomizer to set up, regardless of whether you're using one of those sort of um, little sort of micro coil setups or just the more sort of traditional method. You've got plenty of room to uh, manoeuvre, nice sort of simple connections. You know, you've just got the flathead screw and then a simple sort of uh, twisty nut at the top there. And uh, no, for, so for me, it's definitely a really nice sort of easy Genesis atomizer to uh, get set up and running compared to other ones anyway. Uh, build quality wise, now um, I'm not actual build quality, got no qualms with it whatsoever. It's a nicely sort of built atomizer, but the one thing that does let it down is the uh, is the finish. Now underneath that top, underneath the atomizer deck, all right, you know you can't actually see it now. It's all assembled, but it definitely does look a little bit on the uh, untidy side. Let's put it that way. And on the outside, you know you have got two different finishes. From this point upwards and this section here, they are sort of uh, two different finishes. Now in the close-up shots, I've said it sticks out like a sore thumb. And it's probably me being a little bit harsh, to be quite honest, because like from here, 
no, you would never be able to tell the difference. But when you look it up, it look, when you look at it up close and you catch it in the right light, it, then it does sort of tend to stick out a little bit like a sore thumb. So it's not like it's oh my god, I can see that from here, and that's you know crazy different. You do have to sort of study it quite carefully to be able to see it. But nevertheless, the facts remain they are sort of two different finishes. This section is. Like, like I said, it's a little bit more shiny, a very, very slightly different colour. But uh, the most noticeable thing is the fact that you've got these little tiny um, like little grooves. And you can really feel them, especially if you sort of rub your fingernail on them. But, they, you know, you can sort of see them quite clearly visible as well. Whereas this section here is a nice brush finish, brushed finish. and uh, But it's sort of pretty much completely smooth as well. So um, for me personally, it should be this finish all the way throughout the atomizer. And, um, you know, it is an expensive atomizer, I think, with shipping, as far as I can remember, I think I paid about 100, 160 euros, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, can't quite remember. So it's not a cheap atomizer, and at that price, you know, you expect it to come back to you, you know, pristine throughout, you know, there shouldn't be anything, uh, anything different with the finishes, you shouldn't have any sort of scuff marks, regardless of whether it's a, a piece of the atomizer that's on show or not, you know, so... Um, that was a little bit disappointing, but overall, though, you know, it performs really nicely. It, uh, it looks great on just about any sort of 22 millimeter device. It gives you that nice sort of flush sort of um, finish on either side of your device, which is the sort of thing that I like to, uh, you know, which is the sort of thing that I go for personally. And, um, and like I say, you know, performance wise, I've got no qualms about it whatsoever. The only thing that really did sort of let it down for me personally was the fact that there are sort of uh, two slightly different finishes. But other than that, you know, it's a, it's a great atomizer that performs really well and nice and easy to set up as well. So apart from that, you know, just a shame that the finish let it down a little bit. Um, not too sure what else I can really sort of tell you about it. So, you know, if you fancy trying one out for yourself, go along to www.garageofcreation.com. Thank you very much for watching. Also, come along and visit my website at www.esigreviews.com. That's e-sig-reviews.com. Cheers, guys. Happy vaping. See you later.